as always, the crowds were waiting long before the gates were open on the first day of Wimbledon. And once again, the tennis championships were lucky with a change of weather for the better. Dame Fashion was present as usual, and one of the novelties to catch the eye of the camera was carried by Mrs. Fred Perry. But the play's the thing, beginning on the centre court with last year's runner-up, Kurt Nielsen, at the far end. Nielsen had an easy victory over his young opponent, who is Australia's junior champion. Probably the most popular player at Wimbledon was the 1954 champion Yaroslav Drobny. Here's the final rally of his first match with Drobny near to the camera. But the old favourite was beaten by the stylish newcomer from India, R. Krishnan. Now to Lords to see the closing stages of the second test match. Australia piled a second innings total of 257 on top of their first innings of 285. Mainly responsible was Benno, and here's his 50. <laughs> Benno was caught by Evans for a magnificent 97. The innings ended when Crawford was LBW to Bailey. This left Australia in a very happy position towards the end of the fourth day. Richardson and Cowdery opened again for England, leading a formidable 372 for victory. A black cat strolling onto the field meant good luck, but he didn't say whose side he was on. At the tea interval, the teams were presented to Her Majesty the Queen. First, the visitors. Then England. But England's second innings, after a modest beginning, ended in collapse. Here's Laker caught by Langley. Another disaster came when Miller clean bowled Wardle. The last ball went to Freddie Truman. And Australia had won by 185 runs. Later, at a London hospital, Field Marshal Lord Alexander, president of the MCC, presented an anonymous cheque representing a pound for every run scored in the second test match. Sport in 